Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We now have a guest, Yemi Daniels, as a policy analyst. And together, we'll be discussing key issues about security. Now, the service chiefs that, uh, that had just retired or resigned, they ha appeared before the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs just yesterday for the screening after President Muhammad Buhari submitted their names to the Senate for confirmation as non-career ambassadors. They were asked a couple of questions and the response has got Nigeria talking. talking I mean time. they mentioned uh, you know when they were asked about why they could not effectively tackle banditry you know insecurity in the, you know in the years they were in power and the response basically was that there was logistics issues insufficient funds and that banditry in Nigeria may persist for the next 20 years uh, we now have Mr. Da Mr. Davis here to discuss this issue Daniels. with us good morning and thanks for joining us Mr. Daniels yeah, good morning. Good to be here this morning. Thank you so very much. Okay. So the first question I'd like to ask you is regarding the nomination of these service chiefs in the first place. We had an analyst earlier today who mentioned that service chiefs have no business, you know, in, when it comes to politics in Nigeria, again, you know, given their failure, so to speak, you know, when they were service chiefs uh, just a few, a few days ago. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think these people are competent enough to be non-career ambassadors in Nigeria, should they have been nominated by the president in the first place? Well, thank you very much once again. I, it's actually a controversial issue. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, from, from a, a regular Nigerian that I am, I have reservations for that uh, nomination in the first instance. Uh, because I would like to ask my, I would have to ask the president, what are the parameters for that nomination? What were the considerations? To what extent has the, have these people performed that, that warranted that nomination? I would like the president to at least give me an idea of the basis or the rationale. Given the fact that over the last six years or thereabout that these men have held, uh, have, have been in charge of security in Nigeria, we have not, we have not, we can't categorically say that we have recorded landslide success against terrorism, against, against insurgency and terrorism. If anything, it has spread beyond northeast region that we used to have it. It's now, pre it's now predominantly in the northwest. We have what they call banditry, which I would like to term terrorism as well, in the northwest region of Nigeria. And to that extent, I would want to say the service chief did not do as much as they should. They, they didn't do well enough to have qualified to be nominated at no, as non-career diplomats. Okay, uh, one of the fallouts of um, the screening yesterday uh, were, were some of the, uh, the statements uh, that the former um, army chief said that uh, Nigeria has so many ungovernable space. In your opinion, was he just making excuses or do you really agree that um, we have um, issues when it comes to governing spaces in Nigeria? Uh, honestly, I tell you something, the, the entire country is an ungoverned space as I speak to you. If a, I think the, 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 the former chief of army staff simply, it was talking predominantly from a, from a, from a kind of terrorism perspective. Now think about it. Uh, just a few days ago, there was a clash between, between uh, NURSW and some other factions of transport, uh, the transport sector, uh, an informal transport sector in Nigeria. And uh, there was no, the police could not arrest anybody. The best that Sawolu said to us yesterday or there about, was that they were resolving between them and all of that. That tells us that even in mainstream, there's a, lot, there's a level of ungovernance. Now, if you talk about ungoverned bases, actually the traditional meaning is that those are areas that are beyond the reach of central government or state authorities. So, and in those environments, things happen and the state cannot actually assert sovereignty over those spaces. And so in this case, there are physical spaces that cannot be asserted, uh, that sovereignty could not be asserted. And I tell you, there are, there are non-physical spaces that it's a, a little bit difficult for government to assert sovereignty of the state. So I do not think that the chief of army staff was playing with words. He understands what he said. And the word, the word from that report said many, many ungoverned spaces that tells us that we are in a serious, serious situation. 
Okay, let's talk about these ungoverned spaces. The immediate past, you know, Defense Chief uh, uh, General Abayomi Olunshaki mentioned that Nigeria has over 1,000 forest reserves that are not well managed, not well secured, and that it has become a safe haven for bandits. But with all the security architecture, the amount of security personnel we have in the country, the the, the lion's share that's been, you know, given to the defense ministry year in, year out for, you know, for our budget. Why is it that we still have these issues with forest reserves that are not well secured and that seem to be out of the reach of, you know, security operatives in Nigeria? Uh, first and foremost, we need to understand that Nigeria is a very, is a vast environment. A vast, we have a vast rainforest scenario. We have a vast forest environment across the country, uh, the savanna and the rainforest across the country. So basically, uh, to the extent that we seem to have a defective security architecture, uh, there's, a, there's a tendency for so many, for quite a number of those forests to be to be available to all kinds of elements. Uh, don't also forget that even the spaces that are physical are not forests, the regular spaces are not properly governed. And that tells us that there is a defective security architecture, that even the mainstream is not properly governed. I did mention a few days, a few minutes ago, that there, were, there was a clash in Obalindi, and there was practically nothing that the security operators could do about it. All we resorted to was a political resolution. And that tells us that we are in a serious situation, that even in the, the mainstream, the sovereignty of the state cannot be asserted in the mainstream. Then you can imagine what happens in the forest environments where the systems are not properly managed. So is this an issue of competence on the part of the former service chiefs? Yeah, it is an issue of architecture and competence. And trust me, when the architecture is not right, competence is going to be questionable. The point is that we have a defective security architecture. And to that extent, we, no matter how competent a person is, it wills to have its own fallout. So there is a need for us to rule, look at our architecture again and ask ourselves, is this thing functional for the, for, the, for the 21st century in the Nigeria of today? Is it? Look at it. There is an Eastern Security Network. There is a Moteco in the Southwest here. And there are quite a number. There is Isba in some, Isba in the North. There are a number of, there's a number, there are a number of uh, other security, uh, security agencies, uh, not, not necessarily federal agency, or uh, that, that are, that are holding sway in several parts of the country. That tells us that there are serious situations, there are serious deficiencies in the architecture. All right, Rebi, I want to go back to the issue of um, this ungoverned uh, um, spaces. Uh, who do we hold to account right now? You also mentioned uh, that um, some of these territories don't have um, specific um, sovereignty. So who do we hold to account when we talk about um, uh, spaces not being governed? Is it the state government right now or the federal government? Now, the question we need to also ask ourselves, one, whose, responsibility, whose responsibility is the security and welfare of the people according to the Constitution? It is the federal government to a large extent as far as security, internal security is concerned. The federal government controls the army, controls the police, controls the immigration, cost, controls customs service. And when you look at all the entire internal security machinery, it is, it is, it is seen exclusively controlled by the federal government. So the blame lies with the federal government for not having created a system that will be effectively uh, that will effectively man the security environment, the security, man security in Nigeria. Looking at the performance of the service chiefs when you know they were service chiefs in the country, and now the the names are being forwarded for consideration as non-career ambassadors, do you think they would be able to perform their duties in this new role if they are confirmed? by the Senate. Do you have confidence in their abilities? Should they even be confirmed in the first place? <laughs> uh, it, it, so okay. while we try to reconnect with him, really important questions. Yeah. Should they be confirmed in the first place? Looking at you know, their, uh, their history, basically, in Nigeria. Uh, Aneta, it's just like asking a simple question. Uh, when you're in primary one, you mm -hmm. take a promotional exam, and then when you pass, you're 
you're taking to the next step. So you can't really jump or jump the gun as it were. So if you have not really performed well in a specific area, should I give you the opportunity and the benefit of a doubt that I believe that uh, you would perform in the next time? I think that's a fantastic illustration. It, you know, but then you have people on the other hand who mm -hmm. have basically come out to praise the government, to praise Buhari mm -hmm. for you know nominating them. They said they have vast military experience they've been in the theater of war they know the what to do never really showed in terms of um stemming all the insecurities all the um, armed banditry that we have um the terrorism going on across um the northwest and you know, not east too indeed indeed i couldn't agree more because even though you find you know this military chief this the service chiefs and even the presidency making statements such mm. as they've decimated Boko Haram. I remember that particular statement as far back as mm. 2018. You find out that yeah. these are mere words, mm. but the action on ground is bombs going off in several other parts of the country. You can imagine all Oof, of that. But I have our guests uh, back on the line. Uh, are, you, are you here with us? Yes, I am. Fantastic. So I was asking you about your thoughts as to what you think or how you think these service chiefs would perform you know, based on their history, if they are confirmed by the Senate? Uh, and I did, I thought I heard uh, Justin say that should they, in, should they be confirmed at all? Mm. And uh, uh, I am asking, should the president have nominated them in the first instance, given what we had while they were in service? I did mention earlier that terrorism was confined to the northeastern part of the country when these people assumed office. And today it is very much in the, in the Northwest. And as it, stands, as it stands today, we still do have some of pockets of security issues, even in the Southwest. And that tells us that these men have not done creditably well. They've not done justice. Much as I agree that there is a problem with, a, with an architecture, but before they came, we did not have it this bad. But now it has gone worse. That tells us that they may not have done excellently well given the circumstance, because some other persons occupied those offices before now, and at the time they occupied, they were able to make, at least, they were able to refrain, yeah, to, to, to contain them in the region that they were. But today they have gone to, they have taken over made two major, two major regions in the North. And that is, that tells us that the, com the competence of this man may be questionable. Mm. Mm. Then again, I still ask, good governance just because we have vast um, forest reserves and um, the rainforest and the savannah and all of that shouldn't we be able to channel all of that into positive energy and um, better production that will better the lot of um, not just this present generation but those to come fine we have forest reserve can't we channel it to something very good for the country Oh, yes. I think we need to understand that why do we have ungoverned species in the first instance? It's a result of weak or failed system. And if the system was functional and strong, there wouldn't have been reasons for ungoverned species in the first instance. So it, is a, it, is a, it is a result of government inefficiency. So if, for instance, if our forests were supposed to be some economic potential for us if we knew what we were doing. And that's why people who have agitated for restructuring of the Nigerian state, they do have a point. And I am a fan of restructuring, for instance. And I'm just particular about what, how do we restructure? If we need to unbundle the Nigerian state and make it a little more effective, you would agree with me that when a system is massive, there is a tendency for waste. But when you reduce this, the, 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 when you unbundle that system, the tendency for some level of effectiveness will come to play if the right system is put in place and the right people given the opportunity to put, to contribute to such a system. So in my opinion, the reason we have ungoverned spaces is because we have a defective governance system, and which is now beginning to, uh, they say the, the, the chicken has come to roost. So that's a situation we may have found ourselves now. Okay, if we should take Buratai's word for it about our ungoverned spaces and the, you know, the prophecy of doom, that insurgency may continue to exist in Nigeria the for the next 20 years. In your opinion, what can we do to prevent this? What can we do to reclaim our spaces and create a safe environment for our kids to go to school and for people to travel to the northern part of Nigeria for holidays without fear? Uh, first and foremost, I, did, I remember the Senate did advise the president to declare a state of emergency in the security sector. 
I think that uh, that is a, that would be a step in the right direction that everybody would know that well we have a serious situation in our hands and uh, I honestly believe I honestly believe that we need to restructure Nigeria. Mm. The security apparatus it has been stretched thin. I tell you those guys are doing a lot of work but it's not effective because the architecture is defective. And so we need to restructure Nigeria. And when we do restructure Nigeria, it gives room. It gives room for the different entities to marshal out plans on how to, how to contain whatever challenges they're having to deal with. But in the interim, in the interim, uh, there is a need for us to, to review our counter-terrorism strategy and call crime what they are. The concept of branding, uh, to, of calling them bandits, it's not true, it's not right. These are terrorists. And this was, a, this was one of the problems we made initially, we had initially at the outset of this crisis. In 2010, 2011, when this situation began, they were calling them insurgents, and these guys were terrorists, for crying out loud. So now we are calling people in the Northwest who are, who are terrorizing other people, we're calling them bandits. They're not bandits. These are terrorists. So the moment we do not address the problem for what it is, preferring solution becomes a major, major challenge. So we need to brand these people terrorists first and All foremost. Right, and when we know that yes, we are dealing with terror across the across that across that region, we can now be going, begin some level of regional collaboration with our neighbors in that area. I want to I want, I want to take you up on that uh, regionalism. Uh, restructuring because it means a whole lot of different things to different people specifically when you said that nigeria needs to be restructured are you talking in terms of um, devolution of power right now or resource control or just uh, going back to the regions that we have back uh, before uh, the independence and all of that is that what you're asking for because, because right now the various regions are actually getting their own security for themselves yeah, uh, yes, I am talking about devolution power. I'm talking about resource control as well. You, you will agree with me that this is a massive state called Nigeria. If we devolve power to the states, I honestly do not have, I do not believe in regional government, to be honest with you. My, my concept of uh, restructuring is a state-based restructuring. And I think it should be in phases, you understand? It should be, we should, we should map out the phases that, okay, over the next 10 years, every single state in Nigeria should have been able to take care of themselves. What do we do? We gradually devolve powers to the states until that time where every single state can handle themselves. Every single state in Nigeria is blessed. I tell you that. Every single state has resources. Every single state has manpower in Nigeria. You understand, all we need to do is to create an enabling environment for every of those states to thrive. With the regional government, for instance, there will, there will still be too many minorities. But from a state-based federalism, the minorities will be, re, will be minimal and they can, we can easily, at least we can easily manage whatever issues, whatever conflict that arise within those smaller systems while retaining the local government system that will ensure that governance gets to the gets to the, to the grassroots. I am a fan of state-based federalism, and that's the kind of restructuring I would actually advocate. Mm. Well, thank you so much, um, Yemi Daniels, for sharing your thought concerning um, good governance. Uh, he brought a lot of um, topical issues to Indeed. the fore. He talked about restructuring, he talked about resource control, and uh, how Nigeria can grow if um, each state actually handles their affairs uh, you know, distinctly. Indeed, thank you very much, uh, Yemi Daniels, again, for your time. Have a great day. Thank you so very much for having me. I do appreciate it. Okay. Have a good day, too. Now, there's, uh, Justin, there's so yeah. much talk and clamor about uh, federalism. And I, I do like that you raise the point as to what exactly does he mean mm. by restructuring? Because like you rightly said, yes. if you bring 10 analysts, they would give you different, different interpretations analysis, of yeah, what restructuring, restructuring is. But I feel that one of the reasons why no Nigerian president to date mm. has been able to successfully do this or even seem to be in favor of this, even though they might talk about it in their you know, mm. manifesto and all of that, is because there might be a fear mm. that 
when you talk about restructuring to into states, like let every state control their own resources, even okay. though it seems that when you analyze it, it seems like it's better for everybody. Okay. I feel why like they're afraid to do this because they feel it might lead to like what you had the Biafra. Okay, like a succession they feel, or something. They feel, yes, that every state will begin to want their own autonomy, a total breakaway mm. from the Nigerian entity. I just feel that that's one of the fears mm. that our politicians are having. And some, some school of thought actually believes that uh, when uh, each state uh, is as sovereign on its own, that um, some states might suffer because they really don't have so much internally generated revenue. Then, and that's why every state would now need to be on their toes. And, and you won't wait for uh, allocations from Maslow Rock. From you know, every state, especially Mr. Inye Tok is a big proponent of this. Mm. Mukta Mohammed, an economic analyst, is a big proponent of this whenever mm. we discuss. They talk about how we need to focus on human capital development. development yes. Because when you look at other countries like China and the rest, mm. they invest so much in their young people in education. Yes, they do. Education, they do. most importantly we're all talented the government just needs to tap into our talent give mm. us the resources we need to all thrive. those talents we can actually grow and um, build the, the, the economy indeed indeed mm. and one of the problems of africa is mm. that we all want to leave if if you know the next big brain in nigeria mm. leaves everybody leaves who would stay and develop the well, country i'm staying to salvage my country i am as well <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us on breakfast this morning we hope you did enjoy every bit of the conversation starting from nigeria exiting recession our gdp growing to 0.11%. So mm -hmm. to talks about security, you know, opinions of the Zamfara state government on banditry versus criminality versus dictionary definitions and facts A on whole the ground. Lot we did talk about, yes, and good governance as exactly. well. Exactly. Restructuring, mm -hmm. you know, confirmation of the service chiefs, all important conversations. You can catch recaps of this on all our social media platforms as well as our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa. Mm. So, it's been yes. an interesting show. Indeed. The weekend is here, Aneta. Yes, indeed. So uh, my interesting guest this morning, sitting in for Osao Gyoboa, has been... Justin Akadonye. And I am Aneta Felix saying have a beautiful weekend.